All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the summary. Every nine equations that you guys did. So let's do a quick summary. I'm going to put some room in between it. Oops, I don't know why there's a giant box there. Let's get rid of that box. And here we go. Okay. Combination. So what I'm going to do is write you a generic equation and then just put some notes underneath it. So a combination is when you have uh, at least two or more reactants and you form only one single product. Okay. So like a generic equation, A plus B makes AB. Okay. Now, in here, I'm going to give you some tricks on how to know when something is another type of reaction. Okay. So in this one, key first, balance the charges. Okay. So balance these charges. And then these A and B, they could be two elements. They could be an element and a compound. Heck, it could be even a compound and a compound. So if I want you to make one product, I will let you know it forms a single product or so forth, so forth. Because I'm trying to give you the biggest hint. That's a combination. Okay. So balance the charges. Now, what his state of matter would be? Well, that's called Mr. Solubility Rules. You have to figure it out. Because if it's aqueous, then it's aqueous. If it's a solid, there comes Mr. Precipitate. Or if it's a gas, there comes Mr. Gas Evolution. So precipitate and gas evolution, it can be any, not only reaction, but you have to form a solid. Doesn't mean you started with a solid. Same thing, this could be any chemical reaction of, out of all these eight or nine of them but you have to form a gas. Okay, so on the test, I will put the nine names up there, so that way you can kind of go through the checklist. Okay, it's combination, it can't be this, can't be that. Okay, I formed a solid, it's that. You gotta go, you have to go through each of the nine names. Now I'm gonna give you also a cool trick. This can also be redox. Okay, and why can it be redox? And remember, redox is oxidation reduction. Because these two usually have oxidation numbers of zeros. But then over here, their oxidation numbers change. So usually this could be a plus, and that would be a minus something. So that's why combinations can also be redox. Okay? So if you see a combination reaction on a test or quiz, you have to remember, okay, i got to check for redox. Because there are certain equations you do not take the time. You don't even waste your time. It's not redox. So I'll give you those hints, okay? The decomp is the opposite of combination. So ladies and gentlemen, you need to hear this. You cannot have combination and decomp at the same time. It doesn't make any sense, okay? If you have two reactants that make a product, well, decomposition is when you have one reactant and you're producing at least, at least two or more products, okay? So it's when you have an A, B, and you're producing an A and a B. You can't have these two the same answer on a test. So if you tell me it's combination and decomp, I know we are beyond lost, okay? Because they are not the same. They're opposites of each other, okay? Same thing. I could form a solid. I could form a gas. Okay, so it could be precipitate, could be gas evolution also. Okay, but you need to remember something about decomp. You always need heat. You need that heat to break bonds. They don't always say it, but usually, I'm just going to draw a little dotted triangle. Usually there's a triangle. If they don't write it, it's okay, don't freak out. Okay, but usually you need some type of heat or electricity to break that bond. Because there's a bond that's sitting right there between an A and a B. We just don't draw bonds yet. We'll get there, chapter 8 and 9. So in A and B, you're going to form A and the B. Okay, this can also, hint, hint, can also be redox. Because, look over here, maybe he was plus and he was a minus something, but now they could be in their elemental form. So now zero, zero. Somebody lost, somebody gained, okay? 
So always check for redox for these two. Okay. Combustion. I mean, put some room because combustion, you could have a couple different types. The key part to combustion is one of the reactants has to be oxygen. You have to be reacting it with oxygen gas. So remember, sometimes we like to use that word air, and air means the oxygen. So any type of hydrocarbon, okay, which a hydrocarbon is some amount of C's and H's and could be oxygens, and reacting it with oxygen gas. And I'm telling you now, okay, because you know I won't tell you, these usually are gases, okay? If I said a liquid, then you put a liquid. But if I don't tell you state of matter, that means it's a gas, okay? Remember like those hexane, butane, octane, those are all gases. And I will always, always, always produce CO2 gas and water. Normally we put liquid water, you could see even gas, okay? Doesn't, don't get freaked out, okay? If by chance we slap an oxygen on it, okay, same thing, we'll get the same products. These ones are your kryptonites. Be very careful on balancing, okay. Sorry, I was trying to draw like a kind of like a crazy, I don't know, kind of face. Uh, yeah, that was that was really bad sound effects there. Uh, but these are the ones where you're balancing coefficients just, ooh, it's where counting just dies, okay? So be very careful, it's because you guys always forget to count that oxygen with that oxygen. So this is where you're going to see fractions galore, okay? All of these three so far definitely can do fractions. You can also have a type of combination slip into this. So you can get a metal with some amount of oxygens. So I'm going to write a note here, balance your charges. Because if that metal is a positive, oxygen is negative, you got to balance the charges. So this right here, not only is it common, uh, combustion, because a combustion is the oxygen, but also combination. Also combination. Two reactants make a product. Okay. Please do not put CO2 in water. Where did you get the carbon? I mean, where did you get the hydrogen? It wasn't even there to begin with. Okay. Only hydrocarbons reacting with oxygen, CO2, and water. You could get a non-metal scenario, and usually this is when we just slap the non-metal and oxygen together. They would tell you what you're trying to form, okay? Sometimes it's just the non-metal and O2, or it could just be the non-metal and oxygen. Before you get confused, trust me, you will get some assistance on what you would form. So you do not balance charges. Okay, so you do not balance charges because it's a non-metal with a non-metal, okay? So also, also combination, okay? So you can have combustion and combination, but I'm going to give you the biggest, coolest trick too, and the hint. They are always also redox. And why is it always also redox? Because look at this oxygen. You do not have a compound reacting with a compound. You've got a compound reacting with the elemental form diatomic oxygen. His oxidation number is zero, and it's negative two over here. So the oxygen always changes. But who else changes? This guy. Just gave you the biggest hint ever. The oxygen will always change from zero to negative two. So he will always be reduced, but that carbon has to get oxidized. So you're going to notice this carbon here will change with that carbon. And I'll let you figure out what the math is going to be. Okay? So this is always, always redox. And just like these two. I'm not sure if I'm going to say that word always, but I'm pretty sure, okay, because the reason why I can't say the word always is this. What if they were compounds and you made another compound? That's when I was like, uh, I don't know if I can say always, but I'm going to say the word usually, especially if they're elements. If those were elements and you made a compound, or that's a compound and you made an element, definitely redox. Definitely, definitely. So make sure you take a minute. You may have to rewind, pause exactly what I'm saying with this redox. We've already talked about precipitates gas evolutions, okay? Double replacements, okay? 
And actually, I'm going to I'm going to move Mr. Single. I'm going to move him down here so I can put acid base next to it because acid bases go hand in hand with doubles. Okay, so double replacements. It's a swapping of ions. You have two compounds, or I'm sorry, two, uh, sorry, two compounds that react to form two compounds. Now you got to remember positive and negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Cations always first. This cation is looking at this anion, and they're going to form a compound. And this cation is looking at that anion. So the C has to go first because he's positive. Now the name of the game is those solubility rules, you're going to have to figure out who is different, okay? So somebody, whether this one or that one, don't matter which one, somebody has to be different. Somebody has to be a solid, liquid, or a gas. All right. One of the chemicals just has to be different, and it could be this one or it could be that one, so solid, liquid, or gas. But if both, if both are aqueous, then you got a big ol' NR, a no reaction, okay? So notice we never talked about a no reaction for any of these other types because you will have a reaction. Double replacements can form a no reaction, okay? Now remember, you always have a type of reaction. It's still double, and you always have a net ionic. You just have nothing on the product side. You just have a big ol' NR, okay? Double replacements are not ever redox. Because whatever these charges were over here, the oxidation numbers do not change. They are going to be the same charges on both sides. So that's why don't waste your time. It will not be redox. Okay. Usually double replacements will probably also be precipitate. Okay. Uh, and I'm also trying to think of any other things with it too. Uh, you will never see any fractions because you're not going to see any diatomics. So no fractions for coefficients. And I move single replacements with acid base because usually acid bases are also double replacements. Okay, so this is when you get an acid, and the acid we'll just call it HX for the acid, and for the base maybe it's metal hydroxide. Okay, because usually bases are metal with hydroxide. Just be very careful. There is Mr. Ammonium hydroxide out there. He's also a metal. So every, every, every acid base, they are called neutralization reactions because neutralization reactions always produce salt and water. Okay? It's because that's why it's a double replacement. You're going to dissociate here and you're going to dissociate between the metal and the polyatomic. So the H and the OH come together. And please don't ever write HOH as a final answer. There's your water. And the reason why you're going to get your salt is because you're going to get your metal with that either non-metal or polyatomic. So there's your salt. Okay. Now the question is, is what state of matter is that salt? If it's aqueous, that means it was a strong electrolyte. But if it does become a solid, that means it's a non-electrolyte. You cannot dissociate that. You can't break it apart. So when it comes to net ionic, you know this liquid. You can't dissociate him. Now, depending on this one, if it is a solid, you can't dissociate him. But if it's that strong electrolyte, you can totally break that apart. Definitely, definitely. Now, here comes the tricky. If it's a strong acid, then you can dissociate. And if that's a strong base, you can dissociate. But if a weak acid or a weak base, okay, Mr. MC Hammer is talking to you, can't touch this. You cannot dissociate in the net ionic equation. Because we've already just done a lab and we saw the animation that a weak acid, weak base, they only partially dissociate. And we already saw that it's literally like less than 20%. And most of the time it's like less than 5%. So if that's a weak acid or a weak base, you cannot dissociate it, okay? So with acid bases, usually, okay, and I'm not sure if I want to say the word always, but usually also not redox, okay? Because whatever these charges are over here, they're going to be the same charges on this side, the oxidation numbers. 
Now the last two are single and oxidation. Okay. Now with redox, okay, we've already seen redox can can potentially be combination. It could be decomp. It definitely is combustion. Definitely, definitely. Okay, because the oxygen and the carbon are the ones that are going to be changing. It happens every time. Uh, single replacements are always redox. Okay, that's why I'm going to leave single to the end. Uh, oxidation number singles are always uh, redox. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Yep, that's about it. The name of the game is whatever happened before, the oxidation numbers have to change after. And I just listed a combination one, if it could be anything. Whatever these oxidation numbers are, if, okay, if they're elemental form, this would be zero, and this would be zero. Okay, so if it's elemental form, then what happens over here, let's just say this is a, an ionic compound, this would be positive, and then that would be negative. Remember, these are oxidation numbers, not charges. So from zero to plus one, he was perfect. He had his electrons. Nobody messed with him. He was just perfect just the way he was. But then he did a chemical reaction, and over here, this plus one, he lost an electron. Whoever this A is lost one electron, and because he lost an electron, he was oxidized. Okay? Notice what also happens to the oxidation number. The oxidation number went from 0 to plus 1. It went from 0 to plus 1. It increased. And that's very key that you're also recognizing, not just losing gain, but the oxidation number changed from 0 to 1. And then I usually draw these brackets to help myself. And then this B goes from 0 to negative. He was perfect, but then he gained an electron. So he gained an electron. And then because he gained, he was reduced. Okay, For time's sake, ladies and gentlemen, I'm abbreviating it, but you cannot abbreviate oxidized and reduced. So what happened to the oxidation number? The oxidation number went from 0 to negative 1. The number went down. Okay, I know you gained an electron but the oxidation number went down, so it decreases, okay? So how do you state this to AP as like an answer? Oops, sorry, I'm messing up my notes here. So you would say that A was oxidized and B was reduced. We're always focusing on the reactants, so you only want to list who the reactants were. If by chance it was a compound, so maybe like B was like BC, but the B is the one that changed, not the C, then you have to get more specific. You have to say B in BC, okay? I don't know if AP will allow you just to say B, okay? But I'm going to get clarification for that from you guys. Um, one crucial thing with oxidation, if they ask you how many they lose or gain, let me give you a little scenario because I think when we were doing this the other day, it confused you a little. Let's just say, let's just say they were not in elemental state. Um, let's say this one was uh, negative 2, and maybe this one was like plus 2, and over here it went to plus 1, and maybe this went to negative 2, okay? So what happened is, in the beginning, in the beginning, they are not in pure form. This one right here, negative 2, he actually has extra electrons. He has extra electrons in the beginning. And over here, this one, he's actually missing two electrons. So he, this one has extra electrons to begin with, and then he loses this one right here. I'm sorry, he hasn't lost. He's missing two electrons. So notice when A, look at what happened to A. He has extra electrons, but then went to plus 1. He not only lost electrons, but how many did he lose? And before you're thinking of the number one, he did not lose one electron. He had two extra, and now he has an oxidation of plus one. He not only lost electrons, but he lost three of them. He lost the two that he had extra, and then he lost an additional one to be plus one. So right here, plus two to minus two. He has two missing from the get-go, already two missing. But then he does a reaction, and now his oxidation is two. 
he not only gained, but what did he gain? Hopefully you're not thinking too. He not only gained the two he was missing, but he gained extra. He gained four electrons. So make sure if those oxidation numbers are not zero from the beginning, that you understand what that means from the beginning. And the last one is single. And I'm leaving this one last because this is what the one that we did last. Single replacement. This is the only key reaction that you have to use that chart. Okay. You have to use the activity series to determine if a reaction will occur. Okay. Will a reaction actually occur? So the name of the game is, is the element more reactive? So I'm going to give myself some space. Okay. Usually with oxidation reductions, you could just for um, balancing equations purposes, balancing equations, you could potentially uh, C fractions for coefficients. Okay, not a big deal. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to talk about are could these two be the same? Okay, but let me talk about first what a single is. If you have a metal that has a compound, and I'm putting it in so you understand why I'm saying metal. This metal, according to the activity series, he has to be more reactive. And he has to be so beyond more reactive than the element he's trying to replace. And remember right here, that's a metal. And that could be a non-metal or polyatomic. The metal has to be more reactive than the metal. So on the activity series list, and I will give it to you, the more reactive metals are on top and the least reactive are on the bottom. Okay, don't forget Mr. Hydrogen's somewhere right there in the middle. Actually, not in the middle. It's about two-thirds down. So if it is, they will swap places. So now M will form a compound with B, and A will be an element by itself. That's why single replacements, single replacements are redox. Okay, but I'm going to make a statement at the end. If this is a non-metal, and I'm going to put A and then B right there, that non-metal has to be looking at the other non-metal. Okay, so usually you're not going to see a polyatomic in this case. So the non-metal has to be, same thing, more reactive non-metal. And if the non-metal is more reactive, then they will swap. So now you'll get the A with the non-metal, and then you get B by itself. Now remember the non-metals, the cool part is we only have four non-metals that we have to look at. It's the halogens, and they go in order of the periodic table. Fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine. Easy peasy, you don't even need a chart for that. So fluorine is the most reactive, iodine is the least reactive. So if, 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 the element replacing is not more reactive, then you will get a fat in R, a no reaction, okay? Only doubles and only single replacements do we ever see a no reaction, okay? So singles and double replacements possibly could be a no reaction. So all you do is put an NR at the end, but you always have a type, single replacement, and you always have a final answer still, okay? Now the last statement I'm going to say, listen first, can a redox be single replacement, and can a single replacement always be a redox, okay? A redox reaction, okay, and single replacement, they do go hand in hand, but the relationship does not go both ways, okay? Oxidation is always single replacement. But oxidation, I'm sorry, single replacement, let me say that again, single replacement is always redox, okay? Always, always redox. However, redox, not always single replacement, okay? Because what happens if there's a no reaction for the single replacement? So single replacement is always redox, okay? But redox is not always single because right here, this word, you could have many different types of redox. So it's not always just single replacement. 
Redox could be combination, could be decomp, could be combustion, could be single replacement. So this one is always redox. They go hand in hand. But redox can also be others besides single replacements. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a quick summary of all nine types of reaction. And try to find helpful hints to save you time for this test. Okay. See you on the next one.